Hey guys, as you can tell, we're doing uh, one of our commercial properties right now. Just trying to make it look real nice and, you know, looking good. We like to make our properties just look nice and crispy. I um, wanted to answer a quick question that a, uh, a subscriber asked in regards to commercial properties. Does it make sense to take on apartment complex? So this is what I will tell you and, and just to put it out to you guys in Again, I can only answer this um, with my experience, okay? This is not what's going on, you know, your part of the of the state, whatever the case might be. This is what I've encountered. Uh, number one <clears throat> is that if you have a crew of two and your crew is out there on the average, let's say you, you are mowing two properties per hour and you're making 80 bucks. Now... If you bid on a commercial property, does it make sense to you to make less than 80 bucks? Hmm. That's what I'm looking at. Now, again, guys, everyone is different. I have a set man hour price. You should too, even if you're a solo guy or if you have a crew. You gotta have your prices. Now, commercial properties are notorious for trying to get the lower bidder that's known all over they want to get the cheapest person to do the most work so when you bid these properties ensure that you have a scope of work what is the scope of work a scope of work is basically telling you what they want done and what you need to get done for the amount of money that they're paying you and also a schedule of either the irrigation system check um, whether you are the one that's responsible for the irrigation system are you the one fertilizing, putting down weed control? Are you the ones trimming the trees? Are you the one doing the leaf cleanup, most likely? Um, are you the one trimming the shrubs? Are you the one putting down the mulch? How many times per year do they want mulch? There, there's a lot of things that need to be looked at when you are bidding these commercial properties. Now, I will say that commercial properties, every year, on average, they are trying to make you put in a new bid. You have to put in a new quote, uh, quote to maintain a property. And like everybody knows, every year is a budget and the budget always go down. So things that you need to think about. Also, you need to have insurance. You need to have insurance, guys. Don't go out there doing commercial properties. You don't have insurance because you are there and there's a ton of cars. You know, you trim a tree, laminate, hit a car. Um, you know, your your mower mess around and scrape cars. Tenants are notorious for coming out there and, and blaming you for all kind of things. So be prepared for that. Now, when you do residential properties, keep in mind that you have a lot of picky people. But that is easier because, you know, you can kind of, you know, deal with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Now, I will say that residential customers are extremely loyal Whereas you're going to get them every season, every season, every season. And depending on how you do your work, you know, you can have them throughout the year. Now, there's big money in commercial properties if you know how to bid them right. And there's good money in residential if you know how to bid them right. But at the end of the day, guys, always remember that it is about how much money you want to make. It makes no sense if you're making 80 bucks doing two residential per hour with two guys and you go and get your commercial that's only paying you 35 bucks an hour just to say that you have a commercial property right it makes no sense yeah uh -huh. think about it so that answers your questions no one here on in youtube land can give you what you're supposed to be doing you know what you want to make per hour you know what kind of work you want to do and also remember you have to ensure that you have the equipment to maintain these properties. Don't go out there and get your apartment complex and you're a solo guy and, and, and 
you know, you have apartment complexes and then, then you have uh, residential customers and, you know, you're all over the place working your, your, yourself to death. Pace yourself, get what you want to get, and just keep it moving from there, right? Too easy. I hope I answered your question, guys. Also remember, guys, if you lose a residential customer, it's easier and faster and it is less taxing on your budget your your profits than if you lose a commercial property I've seen a lot of guys in my area take on these big complex and next thing you know they they pick up all this they go out there and buy all this equipment hire all these people the next year they lose the contract all those guys have to find new places to work at and they have a whole lot of equipment that they can't afford to uh, to actually maintain and keep, you know, because they don't have enough work for them. So that's another thing that you gotta kind of think about. Now, I don't want to be negative about this whole commercial versus versus residential. All I want you to know is the pros and cons of both. You know, at the end of the day, it's all about you, man. I, you know, I keep telling you and I keep repeating it, and you know, it's becoming redundant. But it's all about what you, as a lawn care provider, want to do. Um, if you have any other questions about uh, commercial versus residential properties, just put them in, in the bottom, guys. But I mean, it's, it's self-explanatory, guys. You know, you're in this for to make money. You're a business. You're a company, okay? And, and the goal is to be paid a fair wage to what you're doing. So again, if you're making 80 bucks an hour doing residential and you mess around and you're just making, you know, 35 bucks an hour doing commercial, does it make sense to you? Think about it.